Can you hear me? Thank, thank you, Susan, for the flattering introduction. But um, I know uh, I'm going to stretch my speech into overtime. So before I do that, I need some volunteers. So uh, this doesn't count as part of the 20 minutes, by the way, all the organizers out there. So can we have at least four volunteers? I can't tell you for what is the price. OK, so please come up on the stage. The four volunteers coming. Jay, you can be more than four. So even if six can come, come, you can six can come. I can't remember. We met this morning. Yeah, good. That's great. Thank you. Good. Okay, great, Julie. All right. And so we need to be in a line, and uh, your back turned to the street. By the way, before we start, I forgot to say something. I, I, I was going to bring a white pen, but I couldn't reach quite high. I wanted to add the word innovation. So certainly for next time, I would have interact, impact, inspire, innovate, is what I would have up there. So, all right. Okay, now you're gonna have your, you're gonna have your back to the screen. And something's gonna turn on, right? And when that thing turns on, you have to dance to that music. And I think you know what that music is. You can't go off now. Now that you're on, you can't go back on. <laughs> I need to form a warmer barrier. Alright, quick, quickly before they run away, let's have the video turn off. You can't turn it off. <laughs> Barriers 
to be recognized on a global level. So if Sai the singer can make a fool of himself in front of the whole world and do the whole strong, then what's stopping you from going ahead with your creation? It surely can't be more absurd than what you just saw. Why should we even have to discuss a methodology of how to move towards the change we want to be? If we can dream it, why can't we all achieve it? Because of what I call, can I have the next slide please? The fear factor. The kicker's not working. So. What's happening here is that there's a little voice inside us which says, I want to make a change. It's inside us. But we're too scared to jump. In most cases, the problem is psychological versus physiological. Everyone's thinking, what if I don't make it to the other side? The new idea is delicate. It can be killed by a sneer, a yawn. It can be stabbed to death by a quip and worried to death by a frown on the right man's brow. Kind of like what you just, some of you just did when you played Gundam style. You have two options. You let the fear of failure render you immobile and stay where you are. Or you don't look down and you leap to the other side. This is the leap of faith. You've got to remember that security is mostly a superstition. It does not exist in nature, nor do the children of men as a whole experience it. Avoiding danger is no safer in the long run than outright exposure. Life is either a daring adventure or nothing at all. So get ready to dare. Now that you're all fired up with the Gundam style, let's go, but stop. No, don't jump, is what I'm going to tell you. Not just yet. A word of caution. A chasm can only be crossed in one leap of faith. So the one leap requires several steps of preparation. You have to be equipped with the appropriate gear to make it across. You've got to be light so that nothing drags you down. Don't carry any excess baggage. Here is the gear factor got to get rid of. I'm now going to tell you everything they probably learned in this conference and throw it out the window and throw it down the mountain. So, I know you're going to have some more raised eyebrows, but don't worry, eventually you'll, you'll understand what I'm trying to say. So the first thing is, don't innovate. Don't innovate because you want to just, you don't want to imitate. That's not up there. But that's what I'm going to start off with. Now, what I, I have a little story to share with you on that, on imitating and innovating. At the Mumbai airport, uh, which I just completed the design and build for, the private entity who owns the Mumbai airport, GBK, had the in-house designer, and we're having a discussion about control joints, which, which are joints and flooring that avoid cracking of floors so that the, so the airport can, get the, can uh, assume the vibrations that happen when planes are landing in, uh, taking off and other traffic uh, variations when, when there's high traffic floor. So basically, I said, okay, you know, I said, we're going to use the control joint that I used when I did the design and build for the Delhi International Airport. The head designer uh, of the in house head designer says, of, of GDK, says, no. So I said, why? I explained to him the benefits. I said, look, Delhi Airport's been around for five years, there's no cracking, everything's fine, why not? No. And I'm like, why? But if it's, your alternative is not working, show them a whole series of scientific reasons as to why the alternative was working. No. Why? I don't want to do Delhi International Airport. I don't want to be up on a copy anything there. The reason we're doing the Mumbai International Airport is because we want to be different. We're competing with them and we want to be in, in, in um, architectural digest. All right. Okay. Well, I said, it's, well, then you have to sign a waiver so that we're not responsible for anything. Okay. Well, the airport, when the airport uh, before launching, the airport is just launched. Before launching, there were 700 square meters of stone, which is 7,000 square feet with cracks that had to be replaced, and now GBK is paying us for it. Second, we come to don't share. I know, yes, you heard right. Your, whatever your parents told you was wrong. Don't share. You're not sharing this with kids, not for adults. You're all, you're all adults now, I assume. 
So, uh, taking too many opinions about whether you should go and take the plunge or keep dreaming, once you've decided to death, is a sure shot way of faltering. Some will be dream smashers, credit to a friend of mine from another conference. Others will be dream builders. So if you ask enough people, you'll get the yin and yang, and then where do you end up? Well, it's a zero-sum game in statistics. You're going to be back to the status quo. You have to remind yourself an innovative idea would not be unique if everyone had already thought of it. Don't analyze. Too much analysis can lead to paralysis. The opportunity will go by, and you will be going right back to status quo mountain, frustrated that someone else used your research, and then be too tired to climb back up even to the peak, let alone jump from it. So guess what my first innovative project idea was when I left my job at Citigroup and said I wanted to start innovation? Oh, that was grocery.com. Yeah, that was about in, in early 2000s. And I said, I want to do grocery.com. And I did analysis and analysis. And I have a little idea book here, which started then and every year gets updated. And about 50% of it has the analysis for grocery.com. Well, I clearly didn't do grocery.com, but Fresh Direct, which has become the Amazon for food in New York, the equivalent, did it before I did. Don't focus. Luckily, I wasn't too bad off. I still had 20 pages or more ideas that I'd been putting together since I graduated from Waterloo. So it's better to have more than an idea. For some of them to go wrong, it's better to have more than one idea and to have them to have none at all because you've got a safety factor. I still achieve some. I think a few of them have made a dent in the innovative mountain with the world's largest portrait in under our sleeve in the Guinness Book of World Records. The more options you have, the safer you will feel to make the jump. The challenge is simply to prioritize. And if there's turbulence along the way, just make sure you carry more than one parachute. Don't exercise emotional restraint. Yeah, so we always hear, you know, the common thing that we've been hearing over the last uh, day or two is basically that old men always think we're too emotional and don't be emotional, try to be like them. I say the opposite, no. Don't exercise emotional restraint. My emotional drive to prove to my family that I could create something unique rather than sitting in a cushy office in the established family business inculcated a strong desire to innovate a unique design company and construction model where we have a completely vertically integrated solution from mines to the end user in a sustainable way, reducing the carbon footprint, and to provide artistic design solutions through natural products. This meant I had to use my emotional desire to prove this could be done in order to break out of my comfort zone. I wasn't born daring. You're talking to, you're looking at someone who's terrified of water and pools and beaches I, as a baby, and instead went on a tiny rowboat across a choppy river to select stones for a mine that I had to use um, to put on the luxury, on the largest uh, luxury private yacht that was built called the Sultan of Oman as well. You're looking at someone who's scared of heights and ended up standing on a mountain to inspect a rock that, so to ensure that our piece of world artwork could end up in the Guinness Book of World Records. You're listening to someone who still screams at the sight of a cockroach, but was running around doing all-nighters at the Delhi International Airport with rats running around us, me and, and you know, during the initial stages of the Delhi International Airport construction phase. I've had to deal with a client in New Jersey who almost beat me with a crowbar to the CEO of one of the airports telling me, you're a girl, why are you here? Do you need to be shopping or something? Send me on a project director so that he can do this. This is a very, you know, this is a very male-dominated construction site. Look, everyone's a man here, and I have one woman on my design team. So what are you going to do now? I don't think we're going to complete this because it requires a lot of energy and power. We then completed the International Airport's third largest in the world, Delhi International. That was the airport I was talking about, in record time and got acclaim for it um, all over the world. I left my, I went out of my comfort zone. I left my investment banking job to acquire my first entrepreneurial endeavor, which was to take a $2,000 job and restore someone's floor, which involved scrubbing their floor as a water graduate, and then went from there to leap forward to a $35 million airport. Don't 
Don't think or plan. Do not dwell in the past. Do not dream of the future. Concentrate your mind on the present moment. And your energy will be undivided in a concentrated form to give you the unwavering power you need to fly across. Don't yield. Here's another situation, a little story which I call the Let's Get a Man Here to Build the Junction Box episode. Again, this was at the, the Delhi International Airport. Um, we had to, uh, I noticed in the initial design phases that there's, there were these junction boxes. Junction boxes are where wires meet a common point and your outlets and everything have to, have to go somewhere. The messy bundle of wires that you hate around your home but are dangerous in a commercial place and need to be covered. You often see them covered with steel plates. So I said, this looks really ugly and we're doing something unique and we're, we're making a statement in the world. We're asking the, we're, we, we want to make a statement to the rest of the world to come to India and look at the advancement has. It's no longer a developing world. It is a, the evolved world and it is going to be the window to the rest of the world. So what can we do that's different? So I said, hey, no, I don't want these steel frames everywhere. We should have an homogenous. The junction box cover should be hidden. There's actually one right there. So it looks like that, which we are doing. So then, so you you cover you cover that up, and um, we're going to have a lightweight stone technology, um, which we have a proprietary honeycomb technology to cover up that, so you can access the box and it'll be completely new and one of a kind, never done before. So we wanted to innovate this. All right, I, I, I seem to have a problem with these male in-house designers because here comes the in-house designer from Delhi. Well, first it was it was Mumbai, second now first it was Delhi. So he comes and he tells me, you. Um, we can't do this. So I said, oh, right. He goes, no, actually, you're well, right. The, the, the cover is a nice thing for a way to get it hidden. So it comes up with 10 different options, which all break and don't, because you need that lightweight technology. So, and I'm sitting there thinking, why is he coming up with 10 different options? Why? We already have an option. If he likes the concept, why isn't he just accepting this concept? But no, no, no. I want to add some difference. I am the head designer as part of I own the airport. I'm from the owner's team. And um, I'm your client, so listen to me. So I said, okay, fine. So he does it, they all fail. Then he still goes, no. So I said, look, five months later, the airport's built in nine months, okay? Five months later, we still, we didn't implement that because we said it's wrong, we're not going to do it. So he comes, we have a big meeting, the, the owner comes, I usually design directly with the owner, but he said, what's going on? Why is my team not? So he says, I said, okay, fine. Um, so we explained, these all break. Owner says, yes, you're right, I need to go with the one that can eat it. We, we, want, we want the honeycomb one. The designer still says, no, you hired me, they have a big fight. Then, then he says, the owner says, yes, I have a contract. If I don't hold him accountable for this, then I'm going to have a problem. So I'm not going to have to go with what he says. And we're like, they're going to break. So again, we get a waiver. And what I did do, though, was I didn't yield. I gave him 350 junction boxes for free, honeycomb ones. And installed them. I said, I'm just going to give you these for free. You can do the rest of them the way that the, the guy wants them done. And by the way, what ended the conversation? Why did I, why did I at least, I didn't yield to my concept, but I did yield to letting him do what he wanted with a waiver. What stopped me was, he said, the meeting ended this way. He says, where's your father? And I'm like, my father? And I'm like, he has nothing to do with this project. What is this? And, it's, and he had just happened to visit, I was showing off my work, and he happened to visit the airport. So he was, no, bring him here. We need someone who understands technical. So I was just like, you know what? This is such a waste of my energy. Fine, give me a waiver, do this. Went to the owner, owner apologized. Says, okay, I said, I'm gonna give you 350, I'm gonna do a test. So just a few months ago, I got a call from the CEO of the Delhi International Airport. Nika, do you have 2,000 more of those honeycomb production boxes? Because every one of them is broken. All right, now we're on the way to safety. We're in the safety zone. We've figured everything out and we're ready to go. So you pull up your power, ready, get set, go. No, wait, wait, again, stop. You're probably thinking, now what? Oh my god, it's, it's uh, uh, the afternoon, I'm committed to do a shopping, I can't believe this, I figured it out, safety, good, I'll keep it in my mind. Now what? What are you going to tell us now that's more, it's new? Why do we have to be here for another 15 minutes? Well, you're prepared with your safety gear and the determination to take the plunge. 
But how can you be sure that you truly have the power to make it across to the other side? Don't estimate the possibility of turbulence along the way. You need to make a calculated risk. The answer lies in simple physics. And we have a little formula for you. You're there, now you know why it's wrong. Power is force times distance. So I'm glad you're not missing my physics. And you've got the force. You just, the safety care just gave you the force, which is the determination. But what about the distance? I believe the distance depends on the intensity of your intention to begin with. And what is the intensity of the intention based on that? Well, now we have the intensity of the intention, in my opinion, is a function of fear, passion, and spiritual quotient. Some of this you may already have, and some of this you may have to develop. Then what's the spiritual quotient? Okay, now we get to the next spiritual quotient. The spiritual quotient is a function of intuition, which you already have, compassion, and ethics, which you may or may not have, but the more that you have of each component of these functional equations, in a nutshell, the distance you travel is usually driven by a number of catalysts. So the greater will be your power to go further. And that's what's important to analyze. So, what if, can we have the previous slide? The previous one. What if a mountain lion crops up behind you? Now, you either sacrifice or you jump. Most likely you're going to use your fright response and flee right over the other side because you don't have time to think. Well, it's not a bad thing. The fear the lion instills is a good fear. It is intrinsic in responsible human beings to ensure that we don't hurt those around us or ourselves. The fear could be external, where a circumstance compels you to implement an innovation and leads to what I call opportunity in adversity. Just like our P and K, our product, our proprietary product that we produce to clean floors again at Delhi Airport, and why? Why was it interesting? The formula that, in fact, I got my grandfather to develop while he was very sick in '97, uh, because he was uh, an innovative professor and engineer who studied in Germany, and he had the formula right off his head that I couldn't get out of my chemistry books. Well, basically in India, what happens is what I'm talking about. What is this PMK? What I'm talking about is, in India, they, they, uh, some people from certain villages eat this thing called pan masala. And uh, you can't really digest it, so you have to spit it out. And it's, it's red and, and disgusting color, and it's actually a very bad mouth freshener. Um, because it actually causes cancer, and, and now the government's putting out a lot of ads for it, where you, people have got mouth cancer, and, and it deforms your mouth, and it's terrible. But it's part of certain village, certain villages have a culture for it, and it gets addictive. It's like tobacco, really. And part of, some of it has tobacco. When you spit it out, no cleaning angel, will, no cleaning agent can clean it. So there was, so we, there we were with nice white floors and padding as well, all over the place, with red watches, and it was. One week before we had to launch the airport, the Prime Minister was visiting, there was going to be a big launch party, and uh, I went for an inspection, and when my design manager unveiled all the flooring and cladding and other areas that we designed, lounges and stuff, and I said, oh my god, there's red watches. There were red watches in 1.3 million square feet. There was at least 20 to 30,000 square feet of red watches. That, that's quite quite prominent, people can see it. I said, oh great, all these all lighters, they're gonna go down the drain, what's the point of this? I'm gonna get negative publicity for putting my life on hold for three years, moving from New York to Delhi, and this is what I get, what do I do? But I was completely terrified. So uh, we went up, and uh, that's how we came up with the formula. And on day number three is when we came up with the formula, and it worked, and now Mumbai Airport wants to get their hands on the formula very desperately. Passion. The line could also represent an internal catalyst, the roaring desire for you to fill the gap with something that touched your heart because you know you can make a difference. When I saw companies like ABP and IBM had their workers at these airports sleep on the floors in extreme conditions of heat and, and, and cold, I, I was terrified, I was surprised in their own countries this would be a complete human rights violation. They don't really care. Over here, what's going on? So, we 
looked at the opportunity in that adversity and, and next year what we're going to be doing is launching the development of our environmentally friendly mobile housing program for slums and construction facilities. Intuition. This is the part of the innovative energy that is innate. It's nature versus nurture. We're all born with a perfect intuition. Of course, a woman's intuition is, is the best. And men can try as well a little bit. They try to get their innate intuitive powers. We're all born with a unique purpose. And our voice of intuition softly reminds us of our calling from time to time. It is this calling that gives us the power to innovate successfully. The challenge is to hone the voice so it gets louder and louder. In my opinion, meditation is the key. Okay, here's another little, I know we're a little over, but I've already requested that over time. Here's the little key, audience participation. Can you please wake up now and, all right, and close your eyes. And don't go back to sleep, but just keep your eyes closed. I will tell you what to open up. Okay, you can open your eyes now. I want you to think what you actually felt just now. Um, it's, that was loud. To me, that even a few seconds of silence was really loud. And I bet it was pretty loud, but you were aware of it. But you weren't aware of the loud chitter chatter that's happening up there on the balcony. You have to realize that silence is the loudest noise. Louder than any loud noise that you've ever heard. And that comes from meditation so that you can hear your inner voice. You need to silence yourself. Well, we've made it halfway, but we need to own the spiritual quotient. And how do we do that? Well, there's compassion and ethics. We've already done the intuitive part. I've talked about meditation, but we need to finish the spiritual quotient. Well, you need to have a compassionate reason behind your determination if you want to make sure you get to the other side. I guarantee that you will jump much further across the chasm if you have the compassion behind your intention. And then we come to ethics. I believe that you should follow a, deontolo in a deontological approach, which means that the means to the end is more important than the ends in itself. By this, I mean responsible innovation. There are various examples of irresponsible innovation that meet the bottom line, but eventually causes destruction along the way. Such an innovation would be short-lived. It might get you across to the other side, but it might not keep you from toppling down. Examples of these are endless, starting from Nestle powdered milk, which resulted in health deficiencies in babies around the world during the 80s, or carcinogenic sunscreen. We need serious, serious sensible innovators who have greedy emotions to understand the impact of what they produce on society and environment and every life form. This comes naturally to women who have been born as caretakers. Since the beginning of time, they've been caretaking, so they know how to do it. So all those latent innovators out there, whenever you think back to going back down the status quo mountain, I want you to remember the following. Nothing is done. Everything in the world remains to be done or done over. The greatest picture is not yet painted. The greatest poem is still unsung. There isn't in all the world a perfect railroad, nor a good government, nor a sound law. Physics, mathematics, and especially the most advanced and exact of sciences are being fundamentally revised. Psychology, economics, and sociology are awaiting a Darwin, whose work in turn is awaiting an Einstein. Thank you.